Welcome back. I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week I'm presenting part two in a four-part series on good practices for residential duct design. This week we're going to talk about routing of duct work and pressure loss. Without further ado, here's the training. If you're going to have ducts in unconditioned spaces, you're going to want to make sure you route the ducts directly. You want a straight path, not like this flex monster that's on the right hand side here. If you have a bunch of sur excess surface area, you can imagine the gains and the losses on a properly sized system, especially a heat pump. If you had a heat pump which is low temperature air and we're trying to maintain the temperature, the heat pump will continue to ramp up if it's variable speed in order to meet the temperature the, that's needed to heat the space, right? Because you have all this excess surface area outside the building envelope. All right, so really important. You wanna go from point A to point B. And of course, on that previous slide, like I was showing you, a trunk and branch uh, reducing plenum system is much better and more efficient as long as you seal and insulate it correctly, which I'm gonna to get to here, all right? So route ducts directly, okay? If they're within the conditioned space, there's not a lot of gains and losses on them. You wanna make sure you size them correctly. I still wouldn't put a flex monster in, but I would certainly route them as direct as possible so I don't have a lot of pressure loss or temperature loss and gains. Speaking of pressure loss, use low loss duct fittings, all right? Um, this really gives you the ability to use smaller duct work across everything when you talk about cross sections. So if you have a, a trunk it's possible to put more volume of air into a smaller trunk size as long as your velocity is not too high. And like I was telling you before, if you're in the elite level of my Patreon, um, you're able to access all of that training on Manual D. Or I assume you probably have some Manual D experience and you guys know this. The smaller the duct work, the easier it is to install, but you don't want the velocity too high, right? So if you use low loss duct fittings, you're most likely to get smaller cross section when it comes to trunks and actually even runs on the longest runs. So a great example of this is um, a bad fitting on the bottom right would be that bullhead T. And because the height of the duct is about half the width in this example, without turning vanes in there, which most people don't do, this is usually done where a lot of people rough in the trunks and the branches during new construction and then they'll come back and put the furnace in the A coil right underneath that, that trunk and they're just stabbed into the bottom of it. And this is a bullhead T. And when you do this, this is a 120 foot fitting. Or if you look at pressure, that's a 0.12 pressure loss. A huge pressure loss and why you can't get duct or air down to the end of the duct system, right? And most people will start turning the air speed up and then you have to add refrigerant. It's a vicious cycle when it comes to the air conditioning uh, and the performance and the removal of humidity isn't very good when you do that, right? All because of one bad fitting. If instead you made the box, the plenum, the full height, and then you stab just into the side of that box, really simple and easy, right? As long as you have 10 inches above that coil, that's a 35 foot fitting instead of a 120 foot fitting. Or if you actually use something that's a smooth transition, like on the right hand side of that diagram, where uh, you have 10 inches above the coil and you just have a 45 degree angle going into that trunk on the inside radius, right? And because that distance of that is only half the height of the duct, so we're talking, you don't need a lot of room. If it's a eight by 20 duct, it only needs to be four inches in width, right? If it's a 10 by 20 duct, you need to be five inches in width. It's not a huge fitting, but that will give you a 10 foot fitting instead of a bullhead T being a 120 foot fitting. Or the 10 foot fitting is less than one third of the equivalent length of just stabbing it into the side of the plenum. So a huge difference here. We can go from 120 to 35 to 10 right just by doing something very easy and making it simple for the air to get into that trunk and pressurize that trunk this allows you to use smaller duct systems so a lot of times on system replacements this is the number one way to gain equivalent length so you can reuse a duct system that's there especially if you're putting in a high efficient furnace right that uses more airflow than a less efficient furnace what did you think did you like this part two on residential duct design regarding duct routing and pressure loss I'd love to get your feedback in the comments below. Please join me next week where I cover duct sealing, insulation, and duct testing. Thanks for joining me at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.